Hi guys, Jay here. Recently, I've been playing about with Newton, a plugin for After Effects made by Motion Boutique. Newton is a 2D physics engine within After Effects. It's really, really handy. I've used it for loads of different purposes, but one of the things I love creating in it is fluid animations. So I've made a few different fluid animations and posted them on my Instagram. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to create the same effect um, with Newton blurs and levels, that's all you need. Let's jump into After Effects and create a composition. So my composition I'm setting to 300 frames and naming it main comp. Now we need to create a square. Make sure your anchor point is in the center of the square. I'll display the shortcuts to do this on screen now. Open up the rectangle settings and change the size to 350. We then want to hide the fill layer and make sure you have a stroke. Mine's at five pixels and select any color you want, but I'm going with EDF 6F9. It's like an off-white. Duplicate the box layer and go into the settings of your duplicated layer, change the path convert it into a Bezier path. You want to select the pen tool and select the top two points of your square. Right click, go to mask and shape path and uncheck the close button. Duplicate the open layer and rotate it by 180 degrees. We can then hide this layer too. I've decided to make my background colors now, but you can do this later on. I'll display the colors I've used to create my background layers. I've decided to go with a two layered background approach. Here are the hex values They're on screen now. The bottom layer I'm using as a solid color and the top layer I'm doing as a gradient. If you've decided to create the background layers now, make sure to hide them. Now we'll want to create a 10 by 10 grid of circles. My circles have a size of 15 and make sure it doesn't have a stroke, it's just filled in. With your 10 by 10 grid, if you want your fluid to be multicolored, you can alternate the colors within your grid to create a multicolored look. That's what I've decided to do. And the colors I've used are on screen now. If you want to go with a single toned fluid, make sure all your circles are set to the same color. You will then want to create a funnel. I've decided to go with a rounded funnel, but you can use a diagonal funnel. Make sure you also create a breaker in the middle. This stops your grid just falling directly into the box. Now let's get into the nitty gritty and open up Newton. As my funnel is rounded, I'm going to raise the mesh precision value to 10. And I found the best way to make your circles look like a fluid is to change the friction across all your layers to zero. This allows them to move smoothly across the surfaces. Now select the box and the funnel and change the type from dynamic to static and hit play to get a sense of what your simulation looks like. I think mine can do with a bit more bounciness to it to get some splashes within the fluid. So I'm going to up the bounciness across the grid from 0.3 to 0.6. This will allow for circles to bounce more off each other. It should hopefully make it look like the water is splashing within the container. Now we want to find the first frame, the circles enter the box, all of them. So mine is about frame 76. So once we found this frame, we can close Newton and go to frame 76 in your composition. Set the in point for your box layer to frame 76 and set the end point of a duplicated layer to frame 76. Then go to frame 270 and move the second open layer to this frame and put the end frame of the box layer to this point. With a box layer, we're going to set the rotation to zero at frame 76. Jump to about halfway through the comp and rotate the layer by 150 degrees. We're then going to want to go to the end point of this animation. So I'm going to frame 220 and I'm going to change the rotation to minus 90. So it's flat again. Now ease your layers however you want. Then I'm going to adjust the speed of the animation to my preference. I've gone with an influence about 50 on the in and out point of a middle frame. Now what you want to do is make sure you have a position keyframe at the end of your layer. 
Um, this will stop it from just falling off screen as soon as it's stopped animating. Now we'll want to jump back into Newton 3 and select all your boxes. Hit the advanced setting at the top and change the collision group to E and uncheck the collide with E option. Select the box layer and change the type to kinematic. This will take your keyframes from After Effects into Newton and hit play. Once you're happy with your animation, make sure to have the Apply to New Composition button selected. If not, this will just render it to your current comp. Having this on allows you to go back if you want to change any settings later. Now, once your animation is rendered, go to the project window and select Main Comp 2. This is where you'll find the animation from Newton. What we're going to want to do is delete the funnel layers and the opened box layers as we won't need them anymore. Then drag the in point and the out point of a box layer to the beginning and end of your comp. And if you've already created your background, select them back on. But one thing we do want to do, which is the most important bit, is pre-compose your grid. I'm calling mine fluid and we'll have to apply effects to this later. One thing to check is that your box doesn't have any keyframes before and after the main area of animations. Once you've done this, you'll want to duplicate your box layer and now turn on the fill which we hid earlier on and remove the stroke. What we will do with this duplicated layer is use it as a mask for the fluid layer and if you're going with a two-tone look then you can also use it for your gradient. Once you've set up the look of the animation hit play to get a sense of what it looks like. You can leave it at this but it obviously it doesn't look like a fluid. So what you want to do is add a few effects to your fluid comp. First you want to add a Gaussian blur, I'm setting mine to 50. You'll then want to add a levels and change the alpha. So select the RGB drop down menu and change it to alpha. You'll want to then change the gamma to zero and for input white to 25. Once you've blurred it, you'll notice the colors become a lot more muted. So I'm adding a hue and saturation and increasing the saturation by 50. And hit play and now here it is. Have a play about with the blur and with the levels because you can create completely different looking effects. So here are a few I made earlier. The one on the left, I've just changed for blur settings and also adjusted for levels. Whilst the one on the right, I've changed the colors used and also I've changed the settings within Newton. So some of the surface are bouncier and it's just slightly different um, compared to the one we've created in the tutorial. Anyway, that's everything for today, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'd love to see what you guys create. Be sure to tag me because I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.